Hi everyone, I'm Emily Sanford and I work in the Cool World Lab here in Columbia. And I'm here to discuss a paper I've been working on with David Kipping called Bayesian Priors for Transiting Exoplanets. So what we've done in this paper is try to account for certain types of observational bias that affect our understanding of the population of exoplanets that are out there in the Milky Way. Before I get to what we've actually done in this paper, I want to take a minute to discuss some statistics. And specifically, I want to focus on the word probability. So when we discuss the probability of a given outcome occurring, what do we actually mean by that? In the way that statistics is usually taught, uh, probability is defined by running an experiment many, many times uh, and then tallying the results. So the probability of a given outcome is equal to the number of experimental trials that resulted in that outcome divided by the total number of experimental trials. In other words, it's the proportion of experimental trials that resulted in that outcome. So for example, with dice, uh, you calculate the probability of rolling a 4 by rolling the die many, many times, then counting the number of trials that resulted in a 4 and dividing by the total number of trials. If you do that many, many thousands of times over, you'll find that the probability that you calculate approaches 1 sixth. So in order to realize this true probability of 1 sixth, we have to do many, many trials. And in this framework, the word probability can really only properly be applied to repeatable random samplings of this type. So there's another way to think about probability, and it's actually closer to the way that we use the word probability in everyday speech. We can think of the probability of something as our degree of belief that it's true. So we can make probability statements about anything, not just infinitely repeatable random samplings. So we can discuss the probability that an email arriving in my inbox is spam, or the probability that the Orioles will win the World Series, or the probability that the elevator in my building is broken. So this way of discussing probabilities is called Bayesian statistics. And another interesting thing about Bayesian statistics is that it allows us to take some pre-existing belief about the state of the world, called a prior probability, and then update it based on some data that we've collected. Then our new belief, which has been revised to reflect the data, is called the posterior probability. So to return to a previous example, when I first moved into my apartment building, I had a prior belief that my elevator would be working most of the time, based on my experience living in the 21st century. However, after a year and a half of walking up the stairs, I've revised that belief, and now the posterior probability that my elevator is working at any given time is very low. What David and I have done in this paper is codify some prior probabilities for the mathematical parameters that describe an exoplanet transit. So you might think that looking out into the universe and seeing some random transit, that we don't have a lot to build on in terms of defining a prior belief. But we actually do. For one, we know that the exoplanet system has to be aligned such that we see a transit. We also know, if we detect a transit, uh, that the transit event must be significant enough to stand out against the random uncertainty in our measurements. And in that case, we say that the signal-to-noise ratio of the transit is high enough to detect. So in this paper, we take those two forms of observational bias, one, that the system is aligned to allow for a transit, and two, that the signal-to-noise ratio is high enough that the transit is detected, uh, and we use them to define our prior expectations uh, for some of the transit parameters. So for example, we know a priori uh, that we're more likely to detect a transit event if the planet crosses in front of the middle of the star rather than the edge. We also know that we're more likely to detect a transit event if the planet is big relative to the size of the star. And it turns out that this effect is even stronger than anyone realized. So if you don't account for this signal-to-noise detection bias, you're even more biased against finding small planets than anyone previously knew. Thanks for watching, and if you have questions, please ask in the comments below. Uh, and also subscribe to see more updates from the Cool World Fund.